Oh, I think you can see me. I can't see myself on this. Uh, I'll just do a little update or roll out uh, right after I make it. You know, I upload it. I wasn't gonna because I did the teaching post, but there's a few things I can mention. Uh, today I went over to the coffee shop. Sometimes it's kind of like it's supposed to be like a getaway or a day off. And it's interesting. I listen. I just listen to a lot of the old YouTube music and check the news. And, but I sit outside to smoke cigarettes. Every now and then, you go outside to smoke. And you know, my coffee, the coffee shop I go to, it's kind of a nice area. But every now and then, but it's like there's two guys just walking down the street. You could see that. They're almost like some of my friends on the street. And I never met these guys before. But I'm in the gate smoking. There's other people. And one is a black kid and the other is a white kid. And you can see they look like suspicious, like apprehensive. And then the white kid finally walks up. Out of all the people that are in the little coffee uh, smoking area. And he asks me, uh, can I bum a cigarette? So, of course, I get up and I say, sure, kid. I said, and then I tell him, look, when I'm out on the street, I do street ministry. I said, I usually wind up giving cigarettes away. No, five minutes. And then the black kid came over. Uh, at first, he looks like, you know, they know that when people see guys that are on the street, especially in an area that normally is like upper class, they're expecting to not be greeted or like seen as a friend so the black kid comes over and I shook his hand but you know I talked to him for a few minutes they're from out of town they've just been here for like six months maybe in Corpus Christi and I'm, I told the kids I said you know I do ministry with guys in the streets and all the one boy was telling me his mother uh, moved here like six months ago but basically she was struggling with addiction, lives on the other side of town off of Leopard Street. And I said, yeah, I'm familiar with that area. And uh, I think she was, she got married, something like that, and then didn't work out. So they wound up just being here. They're fairly new. And then I asked them, I said, where are you guys staying? And they gave a name, I won't give the name, but they gave a name of apartments that are right off of Ocean Drive. And those apartments are kind of known for drug dealing. And the reason I know, I had a friend of mine who now died. But when he decided he was going to get into the business, that's where he went to. Because my other friends told me, oh, he's living over there now, John. And some of my other street friends gave the name of those apartments. So when the kid told me that's where they're at, and he said there's drug problems over there, I said, you know said, I had a friend that just died not too long ago, and he, was, he knew him. So that's why I won't give the names. It's just interesting to see, you know. All right, I might title this, if there was any interest of uh, public interest, uh, did the devil worship has killed the three kids? I like to watch the documentaries on uh, criminal cases and things like that. I'm trying to stand by where we don't get all the wind. And I don't always, I realize when documentaries are shown sort of like they frame these kids or they frame this person. Sometimes it's legitimate, but sometimes the documentaries basically just show you the one side of it. And this case is famous. It's the West Memphis Three. And it was in Tennessee years ago. The three boys were killed, three young boys. If you watch the documentaries, uh, the initial one I saw a while back was called Paradise Lost, the uh, childhood murder uh, at, I think, Robin Hood Hills. And the, it was an HBO documentary, Then later they did a follow-up. But the three boys, I forget, uh, Damien Eccles is the famous one, and then Jesse, Miss Kelly, and then one other boy. Now, these three boys went to trial in Memphis for the murder of the three young boys. They were like 12-year-old boys. And they show graphic footage, if you watch a documentary, 
and one of the boys was castrated and so there were some signs that there might have been some ritualistic Satanism involved being the boy was castrated and the three boys that were convicted one, Damien Eccles, was sent to death row the other two were sentenced to prison so I watched the first documentary and I also watched the second one this last few days and as they're portraying Johnny Depp became a big uh, advocate for the boys to be released now the three boys were released they were not exonerated but they were let out of prison the documentaries portray it that it was sort of like a southern Christian jury in this town of uh, this area of Memphis, this area of Tennessee, uh, I guess Tennessee, there's other Memphis I think, but it was like a southern Christian community that framed these boys because they were gothic and listened to rock and roll and that's kind of, the and the boys were basically innocent but this, and they go on throughout showing the case and there were some things about the case that might be, you know, questionable. But there was one statement from Jesse Miss Kelly as they interviewed the boys later on and they're still yet not exonerated, but as the boys got a little older, because Jesse Miss Kelly was the one who confessed and implicated Damien Eccles and his other friend. And as I'm watching the documentaries, which are geared to make these boys look innocent, but the other thing that was a little disturbing was the stepfather of one of the boys who was killed. His name, I think, is Stephen Byers. He's a Christian, but he certainly looks a little nutty in the documentaries. And throughout the documentary, they begin kind of saying that they think the stepfather killed his stepson and the other two boys. And over time, this is now, and of course the stepfather is very upset because you see him at the court after they're going to let the boys out, and you know, he's very dramatic. You're going to rot in hell. But I noticed, even though they're portraying this Christian nutty stepfather, Byers, as little off the wall, I did notice he's quoting some scriptures, and I thought, well, maybe he's not as crazy as they're making him look. But in the documentary, the one boy, Jesse Miss Kelly, after they're now deciding that they're going to proclaim their innocence and all, he makes this statement, he says, you know, we were sent to prison and even a death penalty case on Damien Echols. And then he said, but because they found no blood evidence, they shouldn't have done this. And that statement, just even from the pro, these boys are innocent viewpoint, that statement from Jesse Miss Kelly made me think there's something up. Even though it was to make them look all innocent. Because he was the one that seemed to have the conscience if they did it. And he's the one that made multiple confessions, which the documentaries do not show. The documentaries also did not show why the cops honed in on Damien Eccles and these two boys. They said that they honed in on them because they were goths, uh, and they, me they mentioned in the documentary that Damien Eccles was a Wiccan, which was true, and then they interviewed the people from the Wiccan religion. Now look, I don't agree with the Wiccans, say, but the, basically they claim that they are, they are nature lovers, okay, the Wiccans, that's what they say. Then they interviewed other Wiccans and all, and they kind of gave the view that the Christians that convicted the boys were unaware that Wiccans are not Satanists. Now look, I'm not saying, I'm not agreeing with the Wiccans argument, but what they didn't tell you is Damien Eccles not only practiced the Wiccan religion at one point in his life, but he also practiced Satanism. He also claimed Catholicism, but they don't tell you that. They just kind of say, oh, see how the Christians misjudge. But when Jesse Miss Kelly said, well, they shouldn't have convicted us because how could you do it without blood evidence? I knew that something was up. So all I did was simply Google 
What's the evidence? After the three young boys were murdered in West Memphis, the cops did not go out and look for somebody that was a golf kid. Jesse Miss Kelly went home that night and told family they did something, him and his friends did something very bad to three young boys before even the crime was discovered. Then, his own lawyer, I believe, I read it quickly, but they asked him, and he gave details of what happened. He implicated Damien Eccles and the other boy, and then he even said when they were at the scene, he knew the scene of the crime and everything. He said he drank some type of whiskey in a particular bottle, said on the way home from the scene when him and Eccles and the other boy left, he said he threw this whiskey bottle under a certain area. And I think it was his own lawyer that went, and when they found the bottle that Jesse Miss Kelly said they drank that night, threw it, that pretty much even convinced, I think, his own lawyer that Miss Kelly was telling the truth. And Jesse Miss Kelly made multiple confessions. And the documentaries, documentary will show the taped confessions and all and say they were... Uh, you know, coerced. But as I looked at it, just because that one thing keep me off with the Jesse Miss Kelly statement in the pro-innocent documentary, they never said that's why they honed in on those boys. And Damien Eccles actually had a history of uh, consuming human blood at other occasions as he got more into Satanism. So it would certainly look like there was more evidence to the boy's guilt than the documentary portrayed. But as they started uh, targeting the, the stepfather, because he does look a little nutty, that's why I said, you know, I'm going to look a little bit. I'm going to see what it says. Okay? So just because things are shown in the media, the other news story was the Supreme Court pretty much allowed the Trump court travel ban to go through. They still have to decide on it, uh, I think in October. But they said, for the most part, what anybody that kind of looked at it, that had any knowledge at all of the law, would have said Trump had the right. Uh, you know, there are a few things in the Constitution that the president has you know, like absolute power, but one of them happens to be in decisions on immigration, and I read it quickly, but the court basically said, the lawsuit said you're going to uh, discriminate against basically non-citizens, people looking to come. The court agreed and said, well, if there are people from those countries that actually already have family and relatives in the U.S., we could understand that that would be discrimination, but in general, and the Supreme Court said, uh, any immigrant coming in from another country, the president does certainly have the right to put a temporary ban on them. You, you can't apply the constitutional thing of discrimination to immigrants coming in because our laws already have that. And it wasn't, you know, it was, the thing about it, I'm not uh, rejoicing over it, or, but it was, it was really obvious. Even the argument, and this is the problem we're having now. As I watched the news the last few days, CNN and some other news uh, media, what they're reporting as main news is Donald Trump is blaming President Obama for the Russian hacking, or Donald Trump is uh, accusing President Obama of collusion with the Russians. And that's not, none of what he said. And the actual argument Trump has is quite somewhat of a legitimate argument, and here it is. The, the Clinton political machine, they were informed by the FBI, by the U.S. government, that the Russians were trying to hack into their Democratic DNC computers and all. And the Clinton political group were the ones that did not allow for the government to go in and investigate all their computers. This came out in the hearings, okay? Trey Gowdy asked something about this. And why would the Clintons, if they were informed by our intelligence agencies, 
that Russia has attempted to hack into your DNC computers, why would they refuse to hand over any of their computers? Some say it's possible that there's a lot of emails going back and forth on how they needed to get Bernie Sanders out of the race. And it was shown that the Clintons and the DNC and Washington Schultz, that they all did bad stuff against Sanders and all. So the Clintons and their campaign, they were the ones that didn't want their computers for the uh, Russian hacking to be investigated. So some in the talk radio and all, they're saying, why didn't Obama, and, and uh, the article came out in one of the major newspapers the last day or two, that also criticized Obama and said, you basically allowed your own government to not get those computers and to not do something about the Russian hacking because it was a political thing. I originally believed it was possible when uh, Loretta Lynch met with Bill Clinton on the airplane, politics, that she supposedly said they didn't talk nothing about the investigation of Hillary. But then in the Comey hearings it came out that Loretta Lynch actually asked FBI Director Comey, who was now gone, to not call it an investigation, but to call it a matter, which showed you there were political things that she did that were wrong as the head of the Justice Department. So the Trump tweet that why didn't Obama, the six months ahead of time, why didn't he do something? The media is now reporting that on mainline news that Trump is accusing Obama of the Russian hacking. Trump, it's all distorted. It's all distorted. And that's not going to stop. That's going to go on for the next, you know, four years. And I was frustrated the other day. I, I try to listen on the weekends when I'm doing some of the work, uh, writing and all. If I can put on Christian radio or news radio, and there's about five different stations, and it was on a Saturday, and I, it was like in the afternoon or maybe on a Sunday, so the Christian station, KCTA, which I used to broadcast on, it had sort of like, a, it was okay, but it was more like just a Christian talk, and I would rather have more of an educational thing. And then the, the news shows were the Cigar Dave show, Car Talk, and, and, and I actually got mad. I, I put on one of my uh, teaching CDs, and they're covering on the philosophy and getting into uh, Nietzsche, and which I go through those CDs. But I got mad because I thought, out of all the stuff that was going out, all of it was really of no value. And there's some real important things. And then when I put on, I, I, on my TV, I checked the top news, ABC, NBC, CBS, and I have the Roku system. And every one, top stories, top story was the Trump care. And what is it? Okay, I understand that. But I hit Sky News. Now, Sky News is an international news. And they had something on it. But there were actually a lot of world issues that were important. And I just think we're so insulated in this country, in our media, to the point where I don't think we realize it, it, it's like a, 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 we are isolated in our understanding of what's going on. Because there are important things going on things that we should focus on. And so I'll just end it with that. Um, so, you don't always jump on the bandwagon, watch a documentary on a certain issue, and say, oh, right away. I would actually say after looking at it and those things, those three boys probably did do it. And in the documentary, though it was pro, these boys were innocent, and we think the stepfather did it, Stephen Byers, I said, but you, you've given no explanation how he, one man, would have had all three of those boys without one of them running away. So it just so happens that Jesse Miss Kelly, on his own, on his own, initially confessed and said Eccles and another boy were with him, which would be more realistic. Three older boys could have three younger boys and hold them. And there was indeed a ritualistic aspect to the crime, which one of the boys was castrated, which happened to be the stepson of Stephen Byers. So we'll end with that. Um, 
Well, uh, I got another teaching video coming up soon, which is Acts 15, and I'll try and add a few links. And I hope you enjoyed the nice water spot. God bless everybody.